I'm going to take a quick look at the left endpoints because there's a little bit of a trick that we have to do. Trying to come up with a sigma notation of this isn't as easy as it is for the right endpoint. So I want to be able to just jump to the step where we are looking at the sigma notation goal. So here again, we're using left endpoints. We're going to evaluate the function at zero, at two fifths, four fifths, six fifths, and eight fifths. That determines the height of all of these. So we have this. So remember, when we looked at this, we said I could start out with i equals one to five. I have these five rectangles. All of these have a two fifths present. And then on the inside, <coughs> I have five always appears as the denominator. But the goal here is that I have to get zero as my first, but I start with one. And then at the end, I'm trying to get eight up here. And that's going to be when I plug in five. So for all of these, all of these are going to be multiples of two, right? So all these are two. The question is, what do I multiply this by? Well, I'm going to multiply this by I minus one. Because if I plug in I equals one, I get one minus one, which is zero times two, which is zero. I plug in I equals two, the next one, I get two minus one, which is one times two, which is going to be two. Plug in the next one, I equals three. I subtract that, I get 2 times 2, that gives me 4, so I get the same numerator. So you might need to be subtracting off these or adding some things on. You might need to adjust this ever so slightly to be able to have this work. Because remember, the formulas that we had for the sum of i, so when we looked at this, the sum from i equals 1 to n of i, we must start at 1 and we must end at n. Now, if we didn't have this, if we instead had something like, let's say, the sum from i equals, say, 0 to n of i, well, notice this includes this above thing, right? We could plug in 0 for i equals 0, and then we have the sum from i equals 1 to n of i. And then you could use the formula that we have for this. So you can take things out of the sum in case you get to a point where you're like, wait, I didn't start at one. What do I do with that? You could indeed take out things. So just want to show you that little trick that might help you with some that you might get stuck on if it's not a super obvious choice of how you write it using summation notation.